It's no surprise that massive models are generally speaking massively performant, regardless of whether or not they're open source or closed source. But we're seeing a really interesting trend emerge, which is some of the best talent working on open source large language models are now mostly focusing on smaller ones. The trend of who can create the largest, most powerful model has really turned into who can create the most efficient, powerful, and most importantly, fast, small models that you can in theory fit on mobile devices or at least on laptops like Max running MLX. And what I wanna talk about today is something that genuinely we have not seen before. Mixture of experts is not something new. We've seen this in a number of massive LLMs that have been released by Mistral. And most notably, we know that GPT-4 and most everything from open AI uses a mixture of experts architecture. But today I want to talk about a really interesting release from Allen AI that is an open source mixture of experts models that is actually quite small and offers performance that is obliterating closed source models that operate within a similar, usually larger parameter space. So welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. What's really cool about this model is it's Apache licensed, so it's properly open source. It's made up of 64 experts with eight active at any given time, most of which have been trained on around five trillion tokens, which matches both Google's Gemma and Meta's Llama in performance. And the most impressive part of this model is generally it performs with an order of magnitude faster speed than both Gemma and Llama, which is really cool. And in my opinion, in some ways, much more impressive. Of course, you could just say, oh, well, why wouldn't you just run it in Grok? And the point there is most people don't have access to that. And Grok is hardware that you can't actually have in your system. You have to use it with an API. And it's funny to me that people think that, I mean, Grok is amazing engineering, sure. But to run open source models on closed source accelerator hardware, in my opinion, in many ways, defeats the entire purpose of open source models. But anyway, and what gets even more interesting with this model is that technically it is able to achieve this performance with around five times fewer parameters than a comparative dense model from either Google or Meta. And it also took around four times less training flops than a comparable 7 billion parameter dense model. So what was this actually trained on? This was roughly trained on Dolma, Proofpile 2, and DCLM. And unsurprisingly, this is also compatible with transformers and all of this code is available on GitHub and Hugging Face so we can use it right away. And obviously as we enter Q4 of 2024, I think this is probably one of the most impressive open source contributions of the quarter that at least didn't come from a massive tech company. So I wanna get a little farther into the weeds here as to how this model works. And if you wanna look at the paper or the Hugging Face page, those will both be linked below in the description. So the first thing to go over is most mixture of experts models are not necessarily open source. Even if you can download the model in an open source form, the data code logs and in a lot of cases the checkpoints used to get there aren't actually open source sure you can get the model sure you can mess around with it but how you got there is still basically a black box and unfortunately mixtral quen and a number of other models like this are guilty of this so it's cool to see that ol moe from allen ai has kind of set a new standard with saying yes we're just going to give you every part of this so that you could recreate this on your own uh, if you happen to have the compute now obviously that's cool but Again, what I am most impressed by is how this model is able to exceed the speed and benchmarking performance of comparable models like DeepSeek and Llama 2, and even models like Quen Chat, which I've actually used in some projects quite extensively, a much smaller model. So it means this is going to be cheaper to run if you want to use this in production in something like OpenRouter. It means you can run it on even smaller hardware and also it's another step change in how we look at performance with all of these models. And another thing I really like that Allen AI has included here is both pre-training and post-training or adaptation benchmarks. So kind of showing what actually changed with post-training and kind of seeing if there was any more performance eked out. And what's pretty cool is they also uh, on day one have shipped an instruct version of this that is fully compliant with transformers and has been adapted with a bit of DPO. So it's cool to see the differences there as well. And you can still see here that in a number of cases, Gemma 2 9B is still more performant in a number of areas. But when we start to look at other areas here, um, Open MOE is quite impressive, especially when we start looking at other LLMs with only 1 billion active parameters. So the active parameters is kind of everything here. And it's really interesting to see how much of a margin this model actually has, especially once we start to look at post-training which is really where this model starts to shine, especially when we start to look at what it's actually able to do in comparison to models that have 
orders of magnitude more active parameters. And I think there's a lot of work that can still be done here, but to set a precedent with what they've been able to do so far um, leading up to this release is incredibly impressive. Something I touched on in my previous video was this idea of efficiency in inference and how that actually plays into speed. There are a number of ways you can make a model faster when you're giving information and then waiting for a response. And obviously one of the linchpins of this with mixture of experts architectures is how you're deciding which expert to route to and then how you're coalescing information coming out of those experts. And this is something I talked about in my last video about Zamba 2, which um, again, their biggest achievement was efficiency over performance in some cases. And the cool thing with uh, OL and MOE here is we're getting gains in both areas, which is not something we used to see commonly. So you can see here that thanks to this mixture of experts architecture, along with better data and hyperparameters, OL MOE is much more efficient than similar uh, 7 billion parameter models like OL MO. And the gains here are really interesting because it used to be we thought that you had to be using RWKV, Jamba-based models to see this kind of a reduction in required training flops and just energy. And what's also really cool is seeing far less parameters being necessary in each forward pass. And so we're getting gains in both areas, both cheaper training and cheaper inference. And Nicholas has done some really interesting work here. I'll link his Twitter below. But another really interesting thing is when we start to hammer down on granularity and trying to understand which experts are being chosen for different tasks. Generally, larger models handle this better because each expert just has more context and roughly speaking, just ability to produce outputs based on inputs. And what's interesting is with small models, they generally can break down quite quickly depending on the granularity you're trying to inspect. And there were areas where changing how experts were selected did start to degrade performance. Specifically in this case, it was with shared experts. I haven't really hammered this down too much for now, but what's cool is there's clearly a preference for token choice and expert choice, which is quite interesting and sparse upcycling. Nicholas has also done some interesting analysis that I actually hadn't thought a ton about doing before. So one of these was uh, with 250 checkpoints all open, looking at kind of a domain specialization, trying to see where experts are more capable than others and kind of where those layers are actually showing. So what's cool here is you can see kind of a, a domain specialization percentage among all of these layers, which is just kind of a different expert. You can see how different they are in terms of distribution based when we're comparing uh, OL and MOE 1B to 7B and mixtural 8 by 7B. So the curious thing here is there are, when you see spikes, it just means that there are areas of higher specialization and it's interesting to see this performance because Mixtral is basically average across the board for all of these. And the reason there are more bars here is there are, in theory, 64 different layers. And in Mixtral, there are only eight. So that's why these graphs look quite a bit different. And you can see that clearly where we see big spikes, that is an expert that is very competent in that area. And then there's some that clearly are not. And this is more of a, a routing accomplishment than anything else in terms of understanding which are the best to pick based on the input tokens. Now, another really interesting analysis is when we just look at token IDs themselves and try to understand where certain tokens show up in other experts, let's say more often than others. Their paper goes into this quite a bit deeper and I'll link that below as well. But it is cool to see that based on input token IDs and predicted token IDs, there is um, pretty good correlation here. And it's interesting when you look at other models and how much variance there actually is. And one quick question I wanted to go over, and this is a question that I had, so it was really cool to see it show up in these comments here. And it's why you should just be on X if you're doing a lot of AI learning or you wanna learn more about large language models. The paper is great, you should read it if you want to, but the expert choice implementation is pretty interesting. And understanding how you preserve causality as kind of a factor of expert choice routing is pretty interesting. And we know that expert choice routing breaks this commonly. And Nicholas gave us a really interesting answer, which was, yes, that his understanding is that expert choice routing breaks autoregressive text generation, but it's relatively ambiguous, which expert receives the next token. He says here that since they don't actually use it to generate and they don't evaluate on text generation, they don't actually run into this problem. So they've removed the step and curiously have seen some interesting performance gains as a result. And another really interesting tidbit here is understanding what the basis of their open source architecture for this was. You would think that this, since this model is quite similar to Mosaic or Databricks, LLM Foundry, 
that it would be basically identical. And what's cool is just like they said in their paper and on Hugging Face, um, that it's basically pretty much completely based on Mega Bloks and OLMO. And this clearly draws significantly from LLM Foundry, which is cool. So it's cool that they used some open source stuff to, to actually make this and um, that this wasn't just a lot of very impressive bespoke engineering coming out of nowhere. So if you think, oh, like me as an independent developer or as a, on a small team, like there's no way we could ever do this. The cool thing is these tools are being passed around quickly enough that it doesn't mean that you are totally limited just to custom tooling or what you might think is lesser tooling to make things like this. And some of you have requested that I do benchmarks in live stream so you can see them in real time and like request things. So I'm gonna start doing that this week. And yeah, so let me know what you think about this model. I mean, do you think um, small models are actually impressive as I do? Would you rather see uh, new massive models like uh, Llama 3, 405B that are massively capable and in certain cases more capable than what we see from uh, closed source AI companies? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, as always, I hope you learned something. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.